First, I'm last alphabetically. I'm in, I just got to 19. Happy <laughs> <laughs> holidays. Happy holidays. See if I can get my agenda. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Anything <laughs> on? I need the gavel, sir. Good evening. Good to see everyone here tonight. Good evening, good to see everyone here tonight. I certainly wanna welcome everyone to tonight's meeting, those of you all here with us tonight and those of you all who are watching us at home. For this meeting, December 2nd, 2019. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. And first I would like to ask you all to please join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. And now Council Member Reese, would you please lead us in the Pledge to the Flag? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good, Mr. Mayor, good evening, colleagues, members of the public. If it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Thank you very much, Council Member. And now, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Shule. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Council Member Alston. Here. Council Member Caballero. Here. Council Member Freeman. Present. Council Member Middleton. Here. Council Member Reese. Here. Thank you very much. We're now going to move to a special moment that we have every two years in the life of the Durham City Council, which is our organizational meeting. And if you don't have a organizational meeting agenda, uh, they're at the door for you if you would like to have one. I'm first going to recognize Durham County Board of Elections uh, Director Derek Bowens and Phil Lehman, the chair of the Durham County Board of Elections. Uh, for the certification of the November 5th, 2019 municipal election. So if you gentlemen would like to come to the podium here, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. This is a one of the few fun times we get at the Board of Elections to come and certify an election and honor the successful candidates. So thank you for inviting us, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, the first thing we have to do officially is to present the final certification of the election with all the results uh, broken down by, by precinct, with all, with all the totals. This is the official election results uh, signed for by all five members of the Board of Elections. And I'll ask uh, Mr. Bowens to Bring it over to the uh, to the city to the city clerk. Uh, before I present individual candidate uh, certificates, I would just like to say briefly that this was a very successful election. Mm -hmm. Successful for us as well as for those of you who were just just elected. Congratulations <laughs> for that. Uh, we had a total of thirty six thousand three hundred and four citizens voting voting in the election, which represents eighteen and a half percent of eligible voters. Uh, that is a very good turnout for a municipal election. By comparison, if we look at the results of the 2015 municipal election, which is the last time we had at-large candidates elected and a fairly low-profile uh, election for mayor, uh, the totals were 
19,494 votes, which represents 10.8% of the electorate. So by comparison, you can see that we almost doubled the turnout in 2019 as compared with, with 2015. So I think we should all feel good about that. We are always trying to get turnout as high as possible, but relatively speaking, we did pretty well. The election went very smoothly. There were no, no delays, there were no equipment malfunctions or, or other significant problems. I'm also very happy to report that we did a hand count of selected precincts as part of the audit process. And in the, all those hand counts, the results came out 100% accurate. There was no discrepancies at all, which again, something we feel good about and, and, and you should too. And I would like to also recognize and thank the incredible job our precinct of voting officials, uh, the incredible job that they do. Uh, we had 388 basically volunteer precinct officials to conduct the, uh, the, the polls on, on, on election day. Uh, I call them volunteers. They do get a small amount of compensation, but they do it out of civic pride and civic duty. And they work from before 6.30 in the morning till after 7.30 in the evening. They're there all day. They don't go, they don't go, any, go anywhere else. Uh, and I think that conducting elections, which is a very important governmental function, but I think this is one of the rare, probably the only one that I can think of, where actual regular citizens conduct, the, you know, the, take care of the government function. I think that's, I think that's remarkable. Uh, I think they're the unsung heroes of our election process, and they deserve, deserve our appreciation. Um, I also want to recognize the fact that we now have uh, a very wonderful staff at the Board of Elections, and we have been led by an outstanding director, Mr. Derek Bowens, who has been with us for about two and a half years and has done an outstanding job and is being recognized in Raleigh and around the state for the, for the, for the great job that he's, that he's done here. Uh, right now, we are looking forward to the 2020 elections, and as many, as many of you know, today was the first day of candidate filing for the 2020 elections. And we expect to approve a or review plans for early voting in about 10, 10 days. So we are moving quickly ahead on that. Uh, with all that being said, I would like to present the certificates for the successful candidates in the 2019 municipal election. I'll have Mr. Bowens, uh, if you don't mind, bring them up and present them to the candidates. We'll start with our honorable mayor, Steve Shule. Congratulations, Steve. Next, our Mayor Pro Tem, Jillian Johnson. Congratulations, Ms. Johnson. And we have Council Member Charlie Reese. Congratulations. Councilwoman Javiera Caballero. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lehman. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowens. We appreciate your service. We're glad you're here. And if you want to leave early to get home in time for the Duke game, you certainly have our permission to do so. But we're very appreciative of your work. Uh, thank you all so much. Really appreciate your being here. Um, and next, we're going to have the swearing in and the qualifying of the mayor by Chief District Court Judge Patricia Evans. And I'm going to ask my wife, Leo Rupert, to join me. Congratulations. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you. All right. So I, when I say I, you say your full name. I, 
Christ through the man who should be. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution. The Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. And laws of North Carolina. And laws of North Carolina. <laughs> not inconsistent wherewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. <coughs> and impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As mayor. As mayor. Of the great city of Durham. Of the great city of Durham. <laughs> so help me God. So help me God. Uh, thank you, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Next on our agenda is the swearing in and qualifying of city council members by District Court Judge Shamika Reinhart. And I'm going to ask first Mayor Pro Tem Jillian Johnson if she would uh, join Judge Reinhart <laughs> and her family. First of all, congratulations. All right, well deserved. All right, if you will repeat after me. I, I state your, do hereby, do hereby solemnly affirm, affirm that I will support, that I will support and, maintain and maintain the Constitution, the Constitution and, laws and laws of the United States, of the United States and the Constitution, and, the Constitution and, laws and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith. And, that I will and that I will faithfully, faithfully and, impartially and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of, my of my office as council member, as council member of, the city of the city of Durham. All right, Judge, are we ready for the next candidate, next uh, council member? Yes, we are, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And we will now have the swearing in of Council Member Charlie Reese, uh, who will also be joined, along with Judge Reinhardt, by his family. <laughs> All right. So you might need a little help. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Charlie Reese. Are you ready? I'm ready. I? Yes. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Uh, I? I? State your full name. Charles Edwin Reese. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. And maintain. And maintain. The Constitution. The Constitution. And laws. And laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. And laws. And laws. Of North Carolina. Of North 
Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge. Discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As council member. As council member. Of the city of Durham. Of the city of Durham. So help me God. So help me God. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And now, uh, Council Member Javier Caballero uh, will join Judge Reinhardt, and her family is here with her as well. <laughs> so, congratulations. Are you ready? All right. Put your left hand on Bible, raise your right. I state your full name. Alexander Caballero Caballero. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will support, I will support and, maintain and maintain the Constitution, Constitution and, laws and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution, and the Constitution and laws. Of North, Carolina, of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office as council member of the city of Durham. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Judge. Always good to have you and Judge Evans here in the council chambers with us. Come anytime you want. <laughs> uh, we will now have remarks by the reelected and elected council members. And I'm going to start uh, with council member Javier Caballero. Uh, and congratulate her again uh, on her initial election to be a member of the Durham City Council. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, thank you. Thank you to everyone here in attendance and all those watching at home, including lots of my family. I especially wanna thank my mom. Gracias, mamita, te quiero mucho. It is an honor and privilege to stand before all Durham residents tonight. A few nights after the election, I shared the follow. I am humbled by this opportunity and will work hard every day to make progress on the challenges facing our city, from community safety to sustainability, from housing affordability to inclusive economic development. I look forward to working with everyone to make Durham a city that is truly equitable and truly conclusive. And so I commit myself this evening to accomplishing that vision of a city that is truly inclusive and equitable, a city that is for everyone. How can I actualize this vision? I believe it will take all of us. I think it's possible because I have hope and I believe we can. Yesterday was the first Sunday of Advent for many in our community. I appreciate Advent because for me it is an important time to reflect. In my house we celebrate Advent a little differently because no one in my house would consider themselves a person of faith besides me. <laughs> we have an Advent wreath and each, and each of our candles still symbolize hope, love, joy, and peace, but our kids find a quote or reading that represents each sentiment, but it doesn't have to be religious. And then we share something we're hopeful for 
the first, theme, the first week con continuing the theme. Since yesterday represented hope, I have been thinking through what gives me hope. And this city and the residents who called Durham home give me hope. When faith leaders and community members surrounded Samuel Olivar Bruno's car to prevent him getting detained by ICE, it gave me hope because so many came to defend one of our most vulnerable residents. When teachers and other public school allies marched on Raleigh in May, and then again a few weeks ago in Durham to demand a budget not only for better working conditions for them, but for more and better resources for our kids, it gave me hope. When the largest affordable housing bond in the history of North Carolina passed with 76% of voter approval, meaning so many more of our neighbors will have housing, it gave me hope. And so my challenge to each of you and the challenge for me is to continue to be hopeful. We are witnessing very difficult times here in Durham, in the US and around the world. There have been protests from Chile to Hong Kong and it is easy to fall into despair. But in Durham, I believe when we can keep doing the hard work that is necessary for everyone to live a life in, of dignity. Thank you, la lucha sigue. And now I'll call on Council Member Charlie Reese. Congratulations on your reelection. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council colleagues, city staff, honored guests and people of the city of Durham. For the last 1,455 days, it's been my privilege to serve as a member of the Durham City Council. Not that I've been counting. <laughs> I've worked as hard as I can on each of those days to earn the trust and confidence that the people of this city placed in me when they elected me to this office four years ago. And I'm proud of the work we've done together as a council during that time to make Durham a safer, more prosperous, and more affordable city for all our residents. I ran for re-election to the Durham City Council this year, not because I believed we'd solved all of Durham's problems, but because we're making real and meaningful progress toward doing so, and because I wanted to continue doing this critical work with amazing colleagues I respect and admire, and because Despite the fact that this is the hardest job I've ever had, this is also the very best job I've ever had. Now that I've taken the oath of office for a second time, I have 1,463 more days to keep working hard on behalf of the people of this city, and I couldn't be happier about that. Now it's time for me to thank some folks, and I promise it won't take too long. First and foremost, thank you to my family for your love and support. Folks often ask me, how my wife Laura puts up with me and this crazy life we lead together. And all I can say is this, she is the best of wives and best of women, and I owe her everything. Thank you, Laura, I love you. I'm sure all of you will be happy to hear that my daughters, Elle and Gwen, have once again agreed to share their daddy with the people of the city of Durham for another four years. Thank you, my darlings, I love you both very much. I also wanna say thank you to my parents, Kenny and Mary Reese, who came all the way from South Carolina to be here with us tonight, thank you very much. And thank you to my hardworking campaign staff who powered me to victory on election day, Dolly Reeves, Phil Seib, LaVon Barnes, and the person who put together in Bull City together, Rochelle Sparka. And finally, thank you to the people of the city of Durham. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for again placing your trust and confidence in me. As I have often said, I work for all of the people of Durham regardless of who folks voted for. That's why I try to be present in as many parts of the city as possible, listening to as many voices as possible, with the understanding that in my spare time, I'm also trying to be a husband and a father. And finally, I wanna say a very special word to my colleagues here in the Durham City Council. I think all of us know we've had kind of a tough year together this year. We haven't always agreed on every issue that's come before us, and we weren't all on the same page in this year's city council elections. And that's just fine, and maybe that's even healthy. But it would be all too easy to drag those differences and even a few hard feelings into our next year on the council together. Friends, let's not do that. If we truly wanna solve the problems facing our city, we have to be able to face them together as a council. For my part, I am ready to start a new chapter in our collaboration together for the good of the people of this great city. I hope and pray that each of you will join me in setting aside our differences and recommitting ourselves to our partnership together here on the Durham City Council. Because as I've heard it said not too long ago, 
we're all in this together. In closing, let me just describe how I hope that we can all try to do our jobs over the next 1,463 days. Where our city is working well, let's build on those successes and celebrate what's right about Durham. Where our city is broken, let's fix it using every tool at our disposal to right what's wrong about Durham. And when we discuss issues of public policy in this body, let's always, always keep front and center the concerns and the voices of Durham's working families. So here's to the next 1,463 days. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to get to work. Thank you. Thank you, council member. And now, Mayor Pro Tem, Jillian Johnson, congratulations you, on your reelection. Thank you. Um, and thank you to you all. I'm so excited for this opportunity to continue to serve this community for the next four years. And we'll continue to work hard every day to build a Durham for all to make this city a model for innovative public policy and good governance. Um, I'm gonna start with some thank yous. First, I wanna thank my family, especially my partner, Paul, my kids, Elias and Langston, uh, for their support and for tolerating my many evenings away um, doing this job and especially on the campaign trail. Um, I wanna thank my campaign staff, especially Rochelle Sparko um, and Marion Johnson, Lou Kurs and LaVon Barnes for all their work uh, to put me back in the seat for another four years. A big thank you to all of the organizations and um, folks who were involved in the campaign, all the volunteers who did an incredible amount of work to make this happen. And a huge thanks to my council colleagues, Javier and Charlie, who were the only reason that I stayed sane and functional through this long and exhausting campaign. Um, and of course, my deepest gratitude for the people of Durham for placing your trust and faith in me um, to continue to do this work. We have a lot of work to do to make the city the kind of community that we all want and deserve. And we know that we have huge challenges facing us and we know what they are. Um, and we've spent a lot of time on the campaign trail talking about our city's challenges. So today I wanna focus a little bit on our strengths and the things that I love about this community. Um, number one, our people love this city. I've seen Duramites go on full-fledged full -fledged recruitment missions to get friends from other cities to move here, flying people in, taking them on tours, um, and, and offering to pay like relocation expenses to get people <laughs> to move to the city. Um, and it's just because they love this community so much and they want everyone else to love it too. Um, people often struggle to tell you why they love Durham because it's not just one thing. The city is a part of us and it's an important piece of who we are. Um, number two, our robust democracy. Duramites are not people who sit on the sidelines and wait for things to happen to them. Our communities are engaged, they pay attention, they show up for our neighborhoods, they care about what happens in this city. People join political and neighborhood organizations, they run for office, they get involved in their schools, they organize in their communities. We are a people who are willing to have important conversations and are ready for even more of them. Number three, we truly value inclusion. Durham is a community that welcomes people from all walks of life. We have two refugee resettlement agencies in this community, bringing people from around the world to start new lives in Durham. And then we also have people who are descended from the enslaved people at Stagville Plantation, whose families have been here for generations. We overwhelmingly reject bigotry and seek to build a community that values all of our residents' life experiences. And finally, we are a city of change makers. We put our ideas into action in exciting ways. Every month on city council, we get emails and phone calls from people who live here with new ideas that they want to bring to the city of Durham. Already our new participatory budgeting program is being used as a model in cities like Atlanta and Richmond. Our program to help residents get driver's licenses restored and old charges expunged is getting national attention at the uh, National League of Cities. And our work across governments to fight back against mass incarceration is being touted as part of a national movement to build safer communities. We have a lot of challenges but we also have a community of people who are ready to meet them, to get real results, and to make real change for the people of our city. Some of the changes I'll be working hard on for the next four years are, of course, to provide more affordable housing for low-income folks in our community, to create robust violence prevention and intervention services, to provide more opportunities for um, authentic relationship with city government through equitable engagement, community conversations, and participatory budgeting, um, to, provide more inclusive economic opportunity, and of course, to move towards a more sustainable community. And I'm looking forward to working with residents and organizations to meet these goals and invite everyone in Durham who wants to get involved um, to join us. 
Thank you again. And let's all work together to make Durham a city where all of our residents can thrive. We're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I believe it's my turn. <laughs> yes, um, it is. I want to, uh, again, thank Judge Evans and Judge Reinhardt for being with us here tonight, as well as our uh, elections board chair and director. Thank you all so much for being with us. I also want to say I, it's our custom to recognize other elected officials who are here with us. I see Senator Mike Woodard. We're glad to have you back in the chambers, Mike. Uh, I see Damon Siles, Carver Alderman, who for some strange reason has decided to be with us tonight <laughs> at Durham City Council, for which we are very grateful. Thank you. I, I, I see uh, school board member Natalie Byer. Natalie, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, I'm, I, did I miss any elected official? Marsha was Marsha here? Marsha Morey, Representative Marsha Morey was here earlier Burkhead. and may still be here. And Sheriff Burkhead, thank you, Sheriff. It's great to see you here. Thank you so much for being here. And finally, I want to say we have a former council member, Larissa Seibel, who's also here with us tonight. Larissa, glad to have you. I want to thank the people of Durham, the voters who participated in this past election, no matter who you voted for. Thank you for making Durham the rip-roaring democracy that it is, a place where every voice is heard. I also want to thank my fellow mayoral candidate, Pastor Sylvester Williams, for his friendship, and for the important ways in which he continues to serve our city. <clears throat> My friends, what I feel more than anything else tonight is the weight of the awesome responsibility that falls upon my shoulders as I enter my second term as the mayor of Durham. In my first two years as mayor, I've come to understand what a privilege it is to serve in this way. What a gift it is to be entrusted by my community, by the people of the city that I love, with this job and all its challenges and opportunities. In the 150 year history of Durham, 35 people have held this position before me. I have been fortunate to know nine of those former mayors and to call each one of them my friend. And here's what I can tell you about all of them. While they sometimes differed in political philosophy or fell on opposite sides of an issue, all of them served our beloved city with deep devotion. And I seek to serve with that same devotion. I do feel driven to do this work. I wake up every morning burning to get to City Hall, to get the next big initiative moving, to confer and strategize and to push us always forward, forward, forward. And it is true, as most of you know, that I send my last emails well after midnight. <laughs> what I pray for is the ability to do this work, not just with drive, but with care, with wisdom, with patience, with a listening ear and an open heart, with humility. And I ask each of you in this room to please help me along that road. I have so many partners in this work. My wonderful city council colleagues, our amazing city staff, community leaders from every corner of Durham. And I'm especially fortunate to work with the professional leadership of our city government. During my first term as mayor, the city council hired both a new city clerk and a new city attorney. And I want to say now to city clerk Diana Schreiber and city attorney Kim Rayberg, that you were both doing an outstanding job. We are so lucky to have you. You each replaced a respected leader who had served in this community for decades, and that's very hard to do. You have big shoes to fill, both of you, and each of you all has been more than up to the mark. And our city manager, Tom Bonfield. Tom, now in his 12th year of service to our city, and I will say that there is not a finer city manager anywhere in this country. Durham was recently named by Wallet Hub as the fourth best run city in America. This is an incredible accolade and Tom Bonfield deserves the lion's share of the credit. Tom, thank you for your friendship, your guidance, your steady hand on the tiller. Thank you for the fabulous job that you do leading the work of our city.
to Tom, to Kim, and Diana, you all have my full faith and confidence, and I know you have the confidence of the council as well. And then there is my daily partner in love, in family, and in our shared work and yearning for a society that is just, my beloved, Leo Rupert, babe, for 45 years. I have been so lucky to share all of this with you, and I am so grateful. As I reflect on my first term as mayor, there are two moments that define, to me, the heart of this great city. The first event took place on April 10th of this year, the actual 150th birthday of Durham, when an explosion rocked Duke Street and our community. It was a, a day of terrible tragedy and loss. We mourn the lives of Mr. Kong Lee and Mr. J. Rambo. We grieve for their families and the families of the injured. At the same time, it was a day that gave me a great sense of gratitude for our incredibly brave, incredibly professional first responders. For Mr. Rambo himself, who came to the site to try to cut off the gas. For the firefighters who cleared the coffee house and truly saved a dozen lives. For those same firefighters who were literally blown down and concussed by the explosion and who somehow got up and got to their truck and turned their hoses on the fire. I feel enormous gratitude for the emergency medical responders. When I arrived on the scene shortly after the blast with Chief Zaldas and Deputy City Manager Bo Ferguson, I saw people blood streaming lying near the corner of Morgan and Duke Streets. Each of them already attended by a medic administering the care they needed and getting them into an ambulance and off to the hospital. I feel tremendous gratitude for the folks at Duke Hospital and Duke Regional who activated their emergency protocols to take in the flood of patients, several of them severely injured. I feel pride when I remember watching how our leadership coordinated their work on scene, especially our brand new fire chief, Chief Zoldis, who's here tonight, literally experiencing a trial by fire. I will never forget the courage of our firefighters standing up against that roiling ocean of fire with their hoses just a few feet away. And when they grew tired, another wave of firefighters took their place. I am proud, too, of the outpouring of generosity from our community in the wake of the explosion, the businesses and volunteers who provided respite and food to our first responders, the folks who established GoFundMe pages to support the families of the victims and to provide relief to the restaurant workers who lost their jobs from the blast. Eight months after the explosion, we continue to mourn. And we continue to offer our support. And we look forward to the reopening of the St. James restaurant shortly after the new year. And we celebrate, too, a city that can produce heroes. Heroes like the ones I saw on Duke Street in front of that blazing fire. Durham grit. That is what defined us on that day, and that is what defines us every day. The second moment which revealed the big heart of the city to me was a very different sort of event, and it occurred shortly after the polls closed on November 5th, when the results of the affordable housing bond referendum began to roll in. I hoped the bond would prevail. I thought it would. But I had no inkling of the enormous margin of victory it would enjoy. A whopping, <clears throat> a whopping, excuse me one second. A whopping 76% of Durham's voters supported the bond. The bond won a majority of voters in every single precinct. And this just wasn't any bond. I'm proud to say that it was the largest affordable housing bond by far in the history of this state. The bond program is bold, it's ambitious, it's complicated to explain, and it faced plenty of objections, including some political pot shots and some very legitimate concerns. Despite all this, the bond won a smashing victory because Durham's people want to share our prosperity. We said yes to a tax increase in order to house our neighbors who can't afford housing on their own. Now we need to implement the five-year affordable housing plan endorsed so emphatically by our voters. It will start slowly, it will take time, there will be bumps in the road, 
but in the next five years because our voters said yes to a different future for our city. The work we do on affordable housing will lead the state and the nation. Like our response to the explosion, the bond referendum too tells the story of our big hearted city. This big heart extends especially to our most vulnerable communities. While the Trump administration is squeezing down the number of refugees permitted into our country, Filippo Grandi, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, just spent a full day in Durham touring our refugee resettlement agencies. He chose to come to Durham because of the way we embrace our refugee community. In Durham, we welcome and we embrace all people. No matter your gender or religion, your race or language, your country of origin or your documentation status, we want you and we love you. If you are a Latinx immigrant struggling to stay in this country, usted es bienvenido in Durham. Usted es bienvenido si eres de México o Honduras o Colombia o El Salvador. Usted es bienvenido en Durham si está documentado o si usted es indocumentado. El presidente quiere construir, construir un muro de odio a través de nuestra frontera sur. Este odio no va a ganar. En Durham, el amor Va a ganar. En Durham, <laughs> en Durham son bienvenidos en nuestras escuelas, en nuestros lugares de trabajo, en todos los lugares públicos. Queremos que usted y su familia para vivir y prosperar aquí en condiciones de seguridad. En Durham, le acoguemos con los brazos abiertos y con corazones abiertos. In Durham, we welcome you with open arms and open hearts. When I was sworn into my first term as mayor two years ago, I articulated what I believe to be this community's vision of our common future, a vision confirmed in the results of this past election. Here, here is a vision that we, the people of Durham, have forged together. We, the people of Durham, envision a prosperous, innovative, green, and welcoming city that thrives on diversity and difference, that puts racial and economic justice at the top of our civic agenda, that defends the vulnerable among us, that cherishes robust, respectful debate on difficult questions, that demands nonviolence in our homes and in our streets, that embodies the belief that all residents get an opportunity to share in our newfound prosperity that serves as a progressive beacon for the South and the nation. It is a beautiful vision. But forging that vision is actually the easiest part of our task. The hard part is still in front of us, and that is making this vision real. That implementation work is going on every day, inside and outside of city government. And in my State of the City address in a couple of months, I'm going to talk specifically about how we are working to make that vision real. On that night, I'm going to talk about our plans to take on gun violence, about the implement implementation of the affordable housing bond, about our economic development program rooted in our racial justice work, and about how we're going to combat climate change at a local level right here in Durham. We all know the challenge we face. We know that 20% of Durham's people, mostly people of color, are still living in, prover in poverty in our prosperous city. We know the consequences of this poverty. We also know that we are responsible for changing this, as hard as the task may be. Which brings me to the word of the great labor leader and socialist presidential candidate of the early 20th century, Eugene Debs. Debs found his common humanity with those in the deepest need and in the darkest circumstances. And he said, while there is a lower class, I am in it. While there is a criminal element, I am of it. While there is a soul in prison, I am not free. In Durham, we are not yet free. But one of Durham's own, the great John H. Wheeler, in whose memory our federal courthouse was named just a few short weeks ago, told us how to change that. Mr. Wheeler had a motto. The fight for freedom, he said, begins every morning. I'll be here tomorrow morning at City Hall, beginning this work anew. 
and I know all of you, wherever you are tomorrow, will be doing the same thing. Together, let's make the city we love a city for all. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to have our designation of the mayor pro tem. Uh, and it is my privilege uh, as mayor to nominate the mayor pro tem. And it is my privilege as mayor particularly to nominate my friend and colleague, friend for, of many, many years and former student. I, I, I feel it is necessary to say that again. Tell me everything I know. <laughs> Jillian Johnson to be our next mayor pro tem. And uh, I will accept a motion uh, that uh, that uh, appointment be affirmed. So moved. moved. It's been moved and seconded that Jillian Johnson be our mayor pro tem for the city of Durham. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. And the motion passes 7-0. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem, I believe you're now to proceed to this microphone and be sworn in by the city clerk. State your full name. I, Jillian Johnson. Do hereby solemnly affirm. Do hereby solemnly affirm. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As mayor pro tempore of the city of Durham. As mayor pro tempore of the city of Durham. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the organizational meeting. We will follow this with our regular meeting, but we will first have a five minute recess. We will reconvene at 7.52. Thank you all for being here. Congratulations.
Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, the time you. is... And we're back. Yeah. yeah, happy holidays. <laughs> Move the consent agenda. <laughs> All in favor, aye. All right, the time is 7.52. Four, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. What's going on? How are you? It's all your fault, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, you got no, you're up, girl. Right. How you doing? I'm going to call this meeting to order. You want to talk to us tonight? I told you it was I want to call no. this meeting to order. I'm glad to see you. We'll call this meeting back to order at 7.52. Actually, we're at 7.53. And we'll now move to, we, we, we've had our organizational meeting and we have no ceremonial items tonight other than the ceremonial items that we've just had. And if my wife would please come to order. <laughs> I'm not even looking up. <laughs> Leo. <laughs> Leo. Uh, okay, well, that didn't work. Um, and now we'll proceed to announcements by the council. Are there any announcements by members of the council? Any announcements by members of the council? Okay, we'll now move to priority items by the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Good evening, everyone. And uh, I do not have any priority items this evening, but would like to take the opportunity on behalf of the city administration and all of our city employees to congratulate you, Mayor Shul, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson, and Councilmember Reese on your re-election, Councilmember Caballero on your election, and certainly want to reiterate that all of us are uh, ready to uh, to be here tomorrow morning with you, Mayor Shul, and, uh, and begin the work along with the uh, uh, returning members of City Council uh, to help uh, further all of the, your goals and the community goals uh, for the benefit of our everyone. So thank you and congratulations again. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I do remember when I was elected in 2011 to the City Council that at 8 o'clock the next morning you called me on the phone. Uh, so you're definitely ready all the time. We appreciate it. Uh, Madam Attorney, any priority items? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council, it's good to be with you this evening. Congratulations to the newly constituted uh, City Council. I echo all the remarks made by Mr. Bonfield, and we have no priority items. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations. Ditto what um, City Manager Bonfield said, and I have no priority items. Thank you very much. We will now move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda can be approved by a single vote of the council. These are items that have previously been considered by the council. An item can be removed by removed from the agenda by any uh, member of the public or any council member, and if it is so removed, will be considered at the end of the meeting. The first item is uh, uh, item one, approval of city council minutes. Item two, Durham City County Environmental Affairs Board appointment. Item three, Human Relations Commission appointment. Item four, Durham and Workforce Development Board appointment. Item five, Affordable Housing Performance Audit, September 2019. Item six, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2019. Item seven, the Strap Exchange Affordable Housing Development Option Agreement for the Reuse Arts District. Item eight, Loan Commitment to Durham Housing Authority Development Ventures, Inc. for the J.J. Henderson Seniors New Construction Phase 1A. Item nine, Professional Services Contract with Ramey Kemp and Associates, Inc. for Woodcroft Parkway Extension. Item 10, Bid Report. Item 11, Proposed Acquisition of 54.61 Acres of 1041 Communications Drive, Durham, N.C. Item 12, design build services with Monteith Construction Corporation for fire and emergency medical service, EMS station 18. Item 13, utility extension agreement with Pinecrest Duke LLC to serve the Pinecrest residential development. Item 14, utility extension agreement with Eno River Dialysis Owners, LLC, FKC, Eno River. Item 15, contract ST302, street repairs and repaving project 202. Item 16, contract ST301C, paving services 2020. Item 17, contract amendment number eight for ST264C, professional services related to Fayetteville Road improvements. Item 18, contract amendment number one for additional design services for SW52D, LaSalle Street pedestrian improvements, tip number EB5703. Item 19, trenchless pipe repairs, SD2018-03, amendment number one. Uh, you have now heard the consent agenda 
And uh, I will now accept the motion for its approval. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. And the motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Unless there's any more business to come before this body, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 7.57. All right. Thank you.